Now, when it comes to the velocity, of course, we have our equilibrium position. We have our x naught and our minus x naught, meaning our maximum positions. And so now when we pull our object all the way to one side, x zero, we have our equilibrium. When we get it all the way to its maximum position, x naught, and we release it, the instant before we release it, the velocity is zero. In the instant after we release it, the velocity is zero. So it starts out with a very sl small velocity and it speeds up. And the reason it speeds up as it moves in this direction is because the spring is accelerating it. And then it gets to this point, this is the equilibrium position. And so now when we get in this realm, the spring is being compressed. And so the force is actually in the other direction. It's to the right. And then it comes to a stop and the velocity is zero. And then it speeds up again. But what's interesting then is we have V equals zero here. We have V equals zero over when we're over in that location. And we have a maximum in the middle. So as we go back and forth, increase, decrease, zero. Increase, decrease, zero. And so that function... over the period t. So in the beginning, we said the velocity is zero. And at the end, when it returns, it's zero. And it's at a maximum at the midpoint. So we have zero and pi, pi over two when it's headed this way, and three pi over two when it's headed that way. So we are at a maximum and the velocity in this, in, at this instant in time, when we go from 0 to, two, to pi over 2, is negative. And so it achieves a negative max at pi over 2. And similarly, it ends up at 0 at pi radians. And when we get on the, on the way back at 3 pi over 2, it's at a positive maximum. And so that is our graph of the velocity versus time. Now, we'll recognize this as being a negative sign. So we have velocity equals the amplitude in this case is going to be V max. So we have a negative V zero sine omega T. Negative V zero sine omega T. It's a negative sign with the amplitude being V zero, the V max. If we do an RGA on this graph, we can read velocity and time. The slope is delta V over delta T, which is the acceleration in the area is V delta T, which is delta X, the displacement. So for, for um, curiosity's sake here, we could look at this and say, okay, well, the area is, in this case, it is negative and it's getting bigger and it reaches a maximum at pi. That's delta x. We go to our previous example, position time, at pi radians, we have the maximum area, the maximum negative area, maximum negative displacement. And that's what we see at pi. It's at a, a maximum negative. And from there, the area gets positive. And by the time we get back, the position is zero again. Now, I want to point out that we said here that from the graph, V equals minus V zero sine omega T. But when we did the calculus thing, we had minus X zero omega sine omega T. So we can see these two sine omegas, sine omega t's, and if they both equal v, then these two must be equal to each other. So minus v0 must be equal to minus xo omega, and therefore v0 equals xo omega. So that's another thing to know, and we can arrive at our 
our values of the of the graph. Now let's just go back to the position here and see if this is the case. The slope, well, the slope at time zero was zero. The velocity equals zero. And at pi over two, the velocity is a negative maximum. And at pi, the velocity is zero. And at three pi over two, the velocity is a positive max. And the slope at the end is zero. And you'll notice that's exactly what we see over here. We have a velocity of zero to begin, and then we get to our negative maximum velocity, and then we have a zero again, and our positive max, and then we're back at zero. Now, we said the slope is the acceleration. So if we take this equation that we had over here, v equals minus v zero sine omega t, well, dv dt is going to be, the derivative of sine is cosine, of minus sine is minus cosine, so this is going to be minus v0 omega cosine omega t. Minus v0 omega cosine omega t, and that will be the acceleration. Now the slope in this case then, we see is, it's a, let me do it in, in blue. This is a negative max. Here it is zero. Here is it a positive max. Here is zero. And here it's at a negative max again. In our next installment, we'll look at acceleration a little more closely.